Good morning. Good morning. Thanks everybody for being here bright and early. We are so excited that you are joining us for our preparing for Iron Man tips and tools for small businesses to capitalize for increased sales today. We have a phenomenal group of co-hosts with us today and I'm so excited to collaborate with these awesome people to offer some great insight as we have a dynamic event coming back this year in June and you guys have a great runway to start capitalizing and showing why we all love to live, work and play in the greater Roanoke Valley and we will go ahead and get started. All right, just a few housekeeping things as we are getting started this morning. I am recording this presentation and we'll share this with you as there are some great little nuggets that we'll talk about later today for you to reference. Um, if you would please keep your microphone muted, that way we have a clear transcript for you all. If you would like closed captioning, there is a button at the very bottom of your Zoom menu that you can access and that will prompt me to turn that on. So if you would like that, that's no problem. Um, if there are things that you want that you're excited about, you can use the reactions button or if you have a question, you can raise your hand and then that will prompt us to see that. You can also add your questions to the chat and we will address those at the end of the presentation today. All right. So a few quick things. Um, I, my name is Heather Fay, and I am the Regional Program Director and the Botetourt Advisor for the Roanoke Regional Small Business Team Development Center. We're a small and mighty team that serves our small businesses throughout our region. We offer confidential advising, education, workshops, events, and online resources to help your business thrive. We invite you to reach out to start a relationship with us and start taking your business to the next level. I encourage you to visit our brand new website. It is chock full of goodness for those midnights. Oh my gosh, moments that you can find articles, worksheets, on demand, classes. And if you're new to the SBDC, you can use our advisor match tool to get connected to the best advisor for you. And I will place that link in the chat here in just a minute. So how do we do this with all these free resources? So we are funded and cooperate through a cooperative agreement with the US Small Business Administration. We are supported by America's SBDC, the Virginia SBDC, and the George Mason University Mason Enterprise Center. We've also received a pandemic related capacity building grant funded by Go Virginia. Other funding to provide support for our work is provided by local administrations, local economic development offices, organizations, and businesses that are all small business champions and are in your corner. We want to give a special thanks to our host, the Roanoke Regional Chamber of Commerce, for providing space and support for our work. Our center currently serves the Roanoke Valley, Franklin County, Allegheny Highlands, and the New River Valley. In today's workshop partners, as I alluded to earlier, that we've got just an amazing group of people with us this morning are, of course, America, the uh, Visit Virginia's Blue Ridge. We have our host. Um, we are collaborating with Catherine and Marley and their team at Visit Virginia's Blue Ridge. And we have Erica Larson and Brant Bernay with Iron Man Group that are going to be sharing with us in just a few minutes. So here are our standout hosts. And we will go ahead and get started. So Erica, I'm going to mute myself and let you take it away. Thanks, Heather, and thanks everyone for joining us this morning. Um, this is a great program. We're really excited to kick off again for 2022. It was very successful last year as well, so we're excited to, to bring it back this year and hopefully make it even bigger. Uh, and just extending a huge thank you for you uh, to you all for being involved. Um, coming For our athletes coming out of town to this race, it makes it so special for them to have that local community feel, um, to know that there are businesses that you know, really want to see athletes come in and get involved with the local community. So it really makes the race very special. So thank you very much. We'll go to the next slide. Do I have the ability to do that, Heather? Thanks. So Erica, if you just want to prompt me, then I will um, move sure. forward for you. So just wanted to introduce our team. Um, for those of you who were last year, um, 
I was not part of this team, but um, I'm now, I've now joined Sarah, Brant, and Drew. I'm excited um, to do that. Brant is on this call. Some of you probably remember him from last year as well. Um, so Sarah Klemenchik, um, she is our volunteer director. She's a rock star um, and really gets the number of volunteers that we need. And we certainly couldn't do it without the you know 1,500 plus volunteers that we have um, to support behind the, behind the scenes. Uh, myself, I'm the race director uh, for this event, uh, taking over from Brandt. Um, still happy to have him on the team. He has moved into um, an operations manager role, so still very much involved with the event, um, just essentially adding me as a third team member, or fourth team member, excuse me. Um, and then Drew Wolf is our regional director. Um, he oversees the Mid-Atlantic region um, as a whole. Next slide. So just to recap from 2021, it was an incredible event, um, went really, really well, as you can see that some beautiful pictures that um, had um, outline how well it went um, and how great it looked. Uh, we had just under 1700 athletes join us this year, uh, last year, and this year we expect about 2400, um, which will be great because um, each, each athlete brings, you know, anywhere from two to, to five people with them. So that just increases uh, local community impact as well. Um, we had over 1300 volunteers, 58 captains, which means, you know, they oversaw that area um, of volunteers um, and over 21 groups and then uh, Ironman group ourselves brought over 60 staff to assist with the event. Um, community impact from our Ironman, Ironman Foundation, our nonprofit arm, we donated over $21,000 to the local community from volunteerism grants um, and things like that. And then as I spoke on before, um, athletes bring family and friends with them that created about $3.8 million of economic impact, which is incredible. And along with, um, you know, businesses like yours and our volunteers, the local agencies are um, incredible. Um, and just to go back to the economic impact, we do think that's a low number and we're excited to, to aim higher this year. We obviously um, had some COVID restrictions released just shortly before um, the race happened last year. So um, we're going to aim even higher this year for that. Uh, sorry for backtracking there. Um, but we did have 34 local agencies involved, um, which is uh, very high, which is a lot of agencies, um, which is great to have all that support. You know, our other events, we normally see anywhere from, you know, two to eight or 10. So having 34 agencies that we work with um, very well together, it's very cohesive. So we're really grateful to have all of that local support behind us. It, it, that's what um, helps make this event so successful. And then really exciting, some tidbits that we got from our um, surveys last year. We were voted top five Ironman 70.3 races in North America by our athlete satisfaction, which is incredible. So hopefully we can get you know top one or, or top three this year. So we're reaching for the stars again. Um, and then we did win silver in the Roanoke Magazine's best of 2021. I don't believe that's been released yet, um, but just wanted to, to let everyone know that. So really exciting um, and great, great photos recap of last year. Next slide. Uh, just a quick overview. We won't get into the, the deep details here. Um, but we are going to utilize the same venue footprints as we did last year. We have Carvin's Cove, um, where our swim start will be, and our transition one, where the athletes go from swim to bike. Um, beautiful place. We're excited to be back there, as well as River's Edge Park North, which will be the home of um, our expo, our Ironman Village, um, finish line, and transition two. Next slide. So this is just an overview of our race week for you all. So you can kind of see um, what's going on leading up to Sunday race day. Um, we are going to open our Ironman village. Um, that includes where all the athletes come to check in. Um, we have our merchandise store and we have local and national partners and vendors, um, as well as where they check in their bike. And that will begin on Friday from 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. And then something that we're excited to add this year is our Iron Kids event. Um, we will have any ages from you know a few months old to 17 years old, um, and that will be hosted at Rivers Edge Park North as well. Um, and we have uh, a diaper dash, a toddler trot, which are just you know 40 to 80 feet, super cute, um, half mile and one mile races, and um, it's our staff's favorite uh, event of the weekend. It's super cute to see the athletes and and local families come out with their kids to 
to race here. And then Saturday, we will have um, our expo. I actually just realized I had a, a typo there, so I apologize. Sorry, Heather. <laughs> um, I, it should be 9 a.m. to Sorry 4 p.m. No worries. It'll be 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday. So um, we'll make sure that that gets corrected in the info we send out later on. So same kind of deal on Saturday. Um, you know, we have vendors and, and most athletes will be checking their bike and their gear on Saturday as well. So this is a breakdown of what happens kind of behind the scenes on Sunday. Um, and it's, it's good to know for, you know, when the athletes are going to be in your area, um, when you'll see people the most. Sorry, it, it went away. I'm sorry. Hang on. No worries. Pushed something that I'll get this to start sharing that again. Nope, that's not what I to do. I apologize for the technical difficulty this morning. No worries. For just one second. Just trying to move screens and messed it all up. Back to our Perfect. Thank you. Sorry about that. No problem. Um, so Sunday, June 5th, our day will start um, around 3 a.m. where all our parking garages and areas will open um, to athletes to start coming in. Um, we do have athlete shuttles running from River's Edge Park down to Carvin's Cove since, um, you know, it's a bit of a drive and there's not uh, parking available for athletes down there. Um, so we begin that at 3.15 um, and athletes start to get to the swim start and transition to set up their gear and get ready for race day uh, around 345 uh, with the race officially starting at 630 a.m. Um, our, the last athlete will be out of the water and on the bike at 840. Um, so then the first one will be there at 730 on the bike. So um, I know this, the bike course impacts quite a few of the businesses. So if there's a timeline or something that you need, uh, we're happy to answer questions about that as well. Um, and we'll have athletes on the bike um, from 650 to about 120 or so. And then on the run, we'll have the run course on the Roanoke River Greenway from about 910 to four o'clock um, with the finish line and awards, et cetera, happening um, as well. Next slide. This is just um, a very rough overview of River's Edge Park North to kind of give you guys an idea of what our footprint looks like. Um, you can see our finish line over by the tennis courts where we have our VIP, um, as well as the transition area to the right um, of the soccer fields and our expo closer um, to the street with our gear bags. Um, those of you who came out last year, you'll notice that there's a bit of a flip from the expo in the transition too. So hoping that this flow works out really great um, and allows for a bit more space for, for what we're doing this year. These are just quick um, course overviews. The swim course is from last year. Um, we're going to remain the same. It, it worked really well, so we're excited to bring that back. Um, the bike course on the next slide is 98% um, the same. Um, the downtown area, we are um, hoping to, to adjust a little bit just to, to avoid some train tracks. So once those updates are out, we'll, we'll push that out. And then, Heather, if you could just go to the run course, that would be fantastic so last year we were all, we did two loops on the roanoke river greenway um, after receiving our athlete surveys and, and feedback there um, they felt it was a, you know a bit redundant doing the two loops for a long day um, so we have extended our run on both the west and east sides of the greenway just to do one loop um, so we're hoping that really enhances the experience um, and again it will still remain all in the roanoke river greenway um, and on the next slide, it will kind of highlight um, an overview of that. The course map online is not yet done, but I wanted to include the slide here for you all to see. So you'll just see it extends a bit more west and east there. And then we'll go to the next slide. 
So I, I touched earlier on our Ironman Village. Um, if there's anyone who you know wants a bit more exposure to get involved with the event more, there are opportunities to be involved in our expo. Um, you can have a booth. Uh, we've included the links um, and emails if you're interested, as well as the expo time. So um, that's that's a great way to, to also get involved in front of the local athletes in the community. And then again, those of you who are new here um, wanted to highlight a little bit about the, the program. It's it's really to engage local businesses. The, the poster you see there um, is a poster we'll have printed out so you can hang inside of your business um, or you know you can post it electronically on your website, social media, et cetera. Um, it is entirely free. This will be in front of athletes on our website that also links to visit Virginia's Blue Ridge website. Um, and it's also gonna be on our Ironman tracker app, which is the app that everyone uses to track their athlete that includes all the race information, et cetera. So it's not only um, just a piece of paper that sits in a, in a window. It's also in front of the athletes in many other ways. Um, and it's really just to stimulate economic um, development um, and impact locally because we appreciate everybody and what they do for, for race week for our athletes. And we want to be able to, to really push the impact for your business to our athletes. And this is just an example of what it will look like on our website. Um, and on the next slide as well, you'll see these are examples from last year. Um, and it will also be on Visit Virginia's Blue Ridge. So really great images um, and examples of what people had offered and are offering this year. These are actually up to date for 2022. So Catherine, I think I'll pass it to you if you wanna to touch a little bit more on, on, on your website and things like that. Great, thanks Erica and uh, thanks Heather for coordinating this um, amazing opportunity to launch our 2022 Ironman event. Um, we're very excited. Uh, last year was just a taste, I think, of leading up to what will be a full scale Ironman event. And we had a number of folks part of the I Am Local um, program. And as Erica mentioned, it's free to participate. Um, the offers would be listed not only on our website, but um, as Erica mentioned, in a lot of different ways. Um, there's um, ways in which you can um, take a peek on um, the Ironman app, which, by the way, I just want to say is amazing that if you can download the Ironman app um, and you have an athlete or know somebody who is in the, um, the race, you can track them, um, which is kind of neat. So this is the guide that a lot of our um, visitors will use as a way to not only track their athletes, but look to, on things to do, um, a little bit more about the course and just kind of familiarizing themselves with the area. Um, so I think this is such a great way to um, showcase uh, what you guys are offering in terms of special offers and discounts through the I Am Local program. I'm just really happy to be, um, you know, we're a partner with Ironman, um, what they've done to, to really build out this event um, really helps us um, bring people to your front door in another way um, and really highlights that opportunity. Um, our website um, is um, visitbbr.com. Um, if you backslash Ironman, you're going to go on um, to that particular website and you're going to see um, there's the date, um, all the activities. And um, more importantly, we like to use this not only for the I Am Local program, but um, just to guide athletes about things to do um, as well as um, it's a lot of them bring in family members, young um, young and um, looking for various activities outside of what the athletes are doing. Um, so we know there'll be a lot of uh, the sidewalk art shows happening um, at the Todman Museum of Art. We know that there will be um, concerts possibly at Elmwood Park as well. So, so we try to give them that information. Um, but the lodging part of it is very key um, as people are spending um, three and four nights here in this area. Um, and they're looking for things to do um, for that amount of time. I know Erica mentioned that registrations happen Friday and Saturday. Sometimes folks get here on Thursday. The event lasts through Sunday. Um, some folks finish you know, mid afternoon, they're exhausted and stay an extra night or looking for things to see and do um, through Monday. So really starting to build that out. But I, 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 wanna, I want to say that you can actually, um, sign up your various um, 
um, discount for the length of time you want. It could be that it's just Saturday. It could be that it's just um, the day of the race. It could be that it's you know Wednesday through Monday. So just um, keeping that in mind um, as well. Um, but we hope that it will be an opportunity to engage more with the uh, athletes and uh, their families or their entourage, uh, their um, spectators and such. Um, so we hope that um, we'll be able to give folks a great opportunity, not only to view the race, but also to have um, you know, a, a wonderful visit here to Virginia's Blue Ridge. Um, so yeah, so check back often. And um, yeah, we hope to uh, start spreading that word too with, um, with many of our stakeholders in the area, our chambers of commerce and such, just to start getting the word out. Erica, I'll pass it back to you, unless there's something I might have missed. No, thanks, Catherine, appreciate it. Um, another way to get involved um, is to volunteer. We had lots of local groups come out last year, um, as well as this year that have signed up. That's just another way to get involved, to give back. Um, and it, we can't do it without the volunteers, uh, frankly. So um, it's really fun. There's, you know, run course, aid stations, bike course, aid stations, finish line, just really feel good spots. Um, so you can sign up at the link there um, as, or scan, scan that. But we are still recruiting um, and we would love to see you out there um, out on the course. And just again, a, a really big thank you to reiterate that um, this this kind of thing is what makes events so special. Um, having the local community support and offering um, local feel to the event, um, it's it's a really great way to get involved with our race, as well as showcase the community and how how great it is um, in Roanoke, so in the greater Roanoke area. So there is some information there. Um, our volunteer director, as well as the information for um, if people want to get involved, as well as uh, Catherine's information information um, if you need to get in contact. So um, just thank you. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. Brant, if you want to add anything, um, just really appreciate everyone joining us this morning. Yeah, good morning, guys. Um, Ed, I just echo what Erica said, you know, appreciate everybody here on this call and in the communities. Um, you know, our, our events honestly don't happen, you know, outside of the support of these communities. And and our goal is, is really to, to make our events, the communities and, and their own and, and, you know, for them to embrace it. And so, um, you know, that's what our, our end goal is. We want athletes to come back after race week and, or, you know, prior and keep visiting the region, um, you know, throughout the year. And so, you know, just that, that welcoming community and hospitality and spirit, um, that, you know, what we saw on display all of last year during the event and prior and afterwards, um, really did have a really big impact just on the, the athletes and their families that were there. And so, um, you know, it, it definitely adds to their overall experience. And then, you know, that end goal is for them to continue coming back and then and spreading that word to, to other folks. So, um, you know, appreciate everybody on this call. Um, you know, if you're looking to get more involved, you know, obviously connect with Catherine, Erica, Heather, myself, um, and, and see what we can do. And then, you know, as Erica mentioned, um, you know, depending on your location or whatnot, um, with some potential like road closures or just any impacts um, near your business, um, we can definitely share just that timeline of, you know, closures and impacts um, where you are and help you get people to your parking lots and stuff like that. So, um, you know, we're here to help um, you guys. Um, so anything that we can do, you know, feel free to reach out, but again, thank you guys. Last year was incredible first year for an event. Um, and we look forward to just being back in 20 or uh, just over 60 days now. So, um, yeah, appreciate everybody. Hey, Erica, I'm going to jump into you because I really want to make sure that I mentioned Marley Richardson, who's on um, the Zoom as well from our team with Visit Virginia's Blue Ridge. Just wanted to just touch base. And um, she's really the, the uh, person behind the scenes who puts all of these amazing offers um, and discounts up on um, the website. Um, so we know that uh, they, they, they filter through Ironman, then we work collaboratively with the businesses to make sure that that information gets up and on, um, on the website. So excited to have this, um, this partnership and, and really thank Marley for all the behind the scenes um, work that she does to, to pull it all together. I'll just add another idea is 
you know, if your business, if you're closed on Sunday and you don't want to volunteer, but you'd love to be a, a cheerleader, if you will, you know, the athletes, I think that's another great way. Um, I saw businesses in Bacana that had this kind of impromptu watch party that rallied as um, you saw on the very opening slide, which I'll scoot back to, um, let me get back here. And that's a great way to cheer them on and be engaged. As you can see, there's some folks further down um, on Main Street Buchanan as their the athletes are getting ready to, to climb the, the monumentous hill. Um, and they had a great time. Some of the couple of business owners that their businesses were closed had grabbed some cowbells and they just, they made a whole experience out of it. So that's another way to be a part of the fabric. Um, I remember years ago, when Tour de France came when I was a kid and it was just incredible to see these athletes, you know, literally a couple feet from you um, that are just amazing to be there in person to see them. So that's another great way to get involved. Um, we're just excited for you all to be here this morning. And Catherine, I didn't know if, or Erica, if you wanted to share a little bit more about the poster, um, the businesses will get that they can put that up in their, their shop as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for, for that call out. Um, so the absolutely. I am local link that you'll want to, to fill out, um, that essentially puts you in our database of businesses and that will allow us to track who we should distribute the poster to. Um, so that deadline to submit the I am local form that I believe Heather posted the link to in the chat will be May 25th. So that will allow us to get the posters printed um, as well as distributed well prior to race week. So when athletes come to town, that, that poster is visible. Um, and we can also send it electronically if you'd rather post um, or print it yourself or a little bit earlier. Um, um, and post on social media, et cetera. So um, that is available. Um, otherwise, we will make sure to get you a printed copy um, before race week. So that's why that deadline is May 25th to fill out. And that's how we track um, the address of your business and where to drop the poster off. Great question, Dolores. Um, she has asked if we have a mark your calendar poster or a flyer that they can put up in their businesses now. That's ready. If you if we'd like to send it electronically um, or get some printed, Catherine and Marley, um, we can certainly do it now. Absolutely. Currently, I think we have volunteer posters, but um, happy to get um, just posters that post about the event um, happening. Um, and I know where Dolores lives. So I'm happy to get her one. Well, that's great. And there's some, I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong, Erica and Catherine, but if businesses wanted to go ahead and sign up and turn on their special that they're offering, you know, let's say it's starting on April 1, they mm -hmm. could go ahead and start using that. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's no specific timeline that the discount needs to be active. Um, people, you know, come and train from out of town and ride the parkway and things like that um, well before the event. So that that's just another way for you to, to kind of capitalize on, on the impact of the event. Absolutely. Excellent. And one more thing I'll add is it inspired me going back to, let me go back to the slide for the example that we had in Utah, but I thought was really insightful as we've been preparing for this workshop is that they have all different kinds of businesses, specifically the one for automotive. Of So just a shout out for those that are here today, as well as those that are joining and watching this later. You know, this is for all industries of business. You know, so if you wanna participate, like Catherine and Erica have shared, this is a free marketing tool for you. And you have a captive audience that is here. They, they wanna be, they're integrating into the fabric of our community. And it's a great way you never know, somebody may be looking, you know, I want to relocate here. And what is that experience? Or, you know, this is an annual event that I'm going to participate in that, or they're coming back for multiple events um, here in the region. So just a quick reminder that there's, oh, I mean, there's a comedy club on here. There's a cheesecake factory. I mean, or cheesecake business, I should see cheesecake culture. I think it is, um, you know, aesthetic and laser folks. I mean, there's also, there's all different things. So don't feel like you know, I don't know where I fit in. This is really an opportunity for all businesses um, to participate. And I'd say even beyond the kind of greater Roanoke Valley, you know, there's folks that are maybe staying to, our, you know, our north, our east, or south, and our west. Um, so 
if those are some options, you know, like they have mentioned, please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Um, we want this to be a great, continue to be a great event. It was awesome last year and um, going to be even bigger and better this year. Other questions? Heather, I'm also going to mention that um, we would love to get the feedback for anyone who potentially participated last year um, and wants to give any type of feedback for that. Um, and then also be very aware that um, we will be hosting Ironman again next year for 2023. So it's a three-year opportunity. We hope to extend that, um, but we do know that we're in the, um, in the second year and excited about um, an, another year um, for 2023. So you know, looking for those who are participating today to spread the word, whether it's about this program, volunteering, or just as, as Heather said, rallying the group. Um, I know that Kat's on here. I mean, Vinton would be amazing um, watch party um, for the for the area. So um, Buchanan really um, has been um, kind of leading that charge and um, really hoping to, to work more with our chambers and, and get some folks together to have these watch parties and, and really get people out on the streets to um, cheer on our athletes. Hey, Catherine, this is Kat. I just wanted to say what an amazing time we had last year. Iron Man, and I love the idea of a watch party. And hopefully, that's something that we can try to shoot for, maybe this for or something can come along with that. So, um, I just urge everybody to be a part of this somehow, whether it's on social media, in person, but it's a really great event um, that happens. And not to mention what it does for our business, right? It brings in a lot of business. So, um, I know that we were really busy during this time. Thanks, Kat. That's awesome. Um, you, um, you know how to rally the troops and um, really appreciate your support. And I know that Vin is a major part of um, the athletes coming off the Blue Ridge Parkway and coming right through Vinton um, and, um, and into the, the, uh, the downtown and or into the Roanoke area and back to the transition. So excited to have you be a part of this. Absolutely. Has anybody else that's on the call today, did they, did you all participate last year in the I Am Local program or volunteered or? And you can message in the chat or you can un unmute yourself like Kat did either way. Hi, this is Dolores Fest. I have Book No Further downtown. Yes. And we did, we got mostly traffic leading up to the event. Uh, and we had got, a, I think, a lot of people were um, support staff, so to speak, you know, families and stuff with um, participants, and they were very interested in our local stuff. We were uh, real pleased with that. Awesome. Thank you for sharing, Dolores. And you bring up a great point, too, of thinking beyond the athletes. So some, a lot of them are built, bringing their families. I think there was one of the businesses um, you know, they're not restricting it just to their athletes. So you have the opportunity to decide, you know, how you want to offer that promotion. Um, and I feel like even more people with COVID restrictions really being completely minimized at this point, you know, they're going to bring their families and it becomes a, a much longer adventure for them, if you will. And they want to be out and about, as Catherine mentioned, all the other peripheral events and things that people can take advantage of while they're here in our region. Yeah, great point, Dolores, of not restricting the, your offer. Other thoughts or questions? All right, well, as we wrap up, I just have a quick little poll to post for us. It's just a feedback about our workshop today in conversation. If you all will share your input, that would be fantastic. That helps me as we're working on other collaborations and um, with our team. And if there's other things you want to share with us, we'd be, we're here to he help you guys on your journey. And um, we're blessed to have such great people um, to be able to collaborate with us. And I see Kat has her hand up. Miss Kat, if you want to unmute. Hey, I just have a quick question. Um, is there like a 
watch party toolkit or kind of like how to have or how to host a successful watch party that I could pass along and use. Brand, do you want to touch on what you, oh, sorry, go ahead, Catherine. No, that's okay. Um, I'm happy to coordinate Kat with you and and um, with our our team and Brant and Erica on what that might look like and what it's looked like in other communities. Um, you know, not having actually seen one, and I just know that um, it's about getting some of the businesses in the area to be open um, and to have the opportunity to bring in. Um, you know, people around you or the, from the community, they're with you and they're, um, one, they're enjoying whatever it is that you're offering, which would be food and 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 fun. And um, and this, I love the cowbells and hopefully we're gonna have some cowbells. So hopefully we can get some of those out and just really um, um, just invite people. Um, and I really hope Kat to be working with the um, Litton Chamber of Commerce to work collaboratively alongside you um, so I think that's something we want to talk about. I don't know that there's any one way to do this, and I don't think there's any way to say it's right or, you know, the wrong way. So I think any, any um, group of people that get together to help cheer on the athletes is a huge step in the right direction. But having some of the businesses open, um, it will make a difference, obviously, because it's a Sunday. Um, so Erica and Brant, what, what am I missing? Yeah, I think, um, correct, Catherine, we can um, just huddle up and, and create something um, and then get it passed along and just, you know, take some learnings from, you know, last year's event here, but then, you know, we, we operate, um, you know, honestly across the globe, like 260 events, but in North America, like 70. So um, we can get some good learnings just from other events and, and how they operate some of those like watch party pieces and, uh, you know, collectively just piece something together. Great, thank you. And I love what you placed in the chat about, you know, it doesn't have to be a discount. It could be a specialty theme drink, for example, a kid's toy, cowbells, et cetera, all different fun things or unique things to your business. Um, for those that are watching later, I thought that was a, a great point that it can be, you can be really creative with this and cre again, creating that experience that ties into your business um, and a and memorable experience too, that they want to come back next year and, or maybe they're coming back on vacation. You just never know where those opportunities are going to lead for your business. Other thoughts or ideas, questions? So we've got our, our experts with us this morning. Right. Well, thank you all so much for making time. A huge thank you again to, oh, we've got another question real quickly. Any suggestions on the best kinds of offers? Erica and Bran or Catherine, do you all have any thoughts? I'll just echo what Catherine said, um, as well as you, Heather, it, the variety of offers. Um, I don't think there is, you know, one good one compared to the other, the, the variety and showcasing how many different local businesses there are, I think is, is the most special, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think it, there's, you know, one um, better one or whatnot than others. I mean, we've seen, you know, restaurants that it might be, you know, a free appetizer or 10% off your entire meal or like a free drink, um, you know, on the, the example of um, like a coffee shop, you know, we've seen an Iron Man themed coffee drink or something like that. Um, or, you know, in that instance of some cowbells that they've handed out to someone that's made a purchase to support the race. So um, I think all those are, are good examples. Excellent, thank you both for your input and ideas. And I love the idea of being able to, you know, gather some input from other races you know, here in the U.S., but around the globe of what are some things that you all have learned that we can also share out um, with folks that are watching today, but we can also, you know, collaborate with Catherine and Marley here locally to distribute those. Um, you know, I know we can through the SBDC of share those some little tips as we're continuing to get closer to race day of those little nuggets that are helpful for businesses um, and the community. I know people 
and look for all different kinds of things when they're coming to a new area to, to find out information. So, all right. Any other? Um, um, Mel, let's see here. Any ideas on things to do to support the volunteers? Great question, Mel. Erica or Brant, do you want to take that question? Yeah, I mean, volunteers, like I said, are, are integral to our event. We can't do it without them. So um, anything from, you know, if your business is outside a water station, just letting them even just as simple as coming to use the bathroom inside your business for a break, uh, something as small as that is really appreciated. But like I said, as well, we, you know, if your group wants to come out and volunteer, we do also have um, community grants. Um, so if you bring a group, I believe if, if it's uh, 15 or more, um, you can apply for a community grant uh, through the Ironman Foundation for volunteering. Um, and, you know, if there's something as donating snacks or, or water, um, of course, we also provide plenty of that as well. But anything um, like that is appreciated from the volunteers. Brand, if you want to add anything. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, same thing on the, the volunteer end. Um, you know, we like to feed them and keep them hydrated, you know, especially on race day, but, you know, all the days prior. Um, but, you know, in their um, volunteer bags, they, they get a, a bag and a shirt and um, a hat, I believe, and some other stuff. And so, you know, if there was something that you wanted to do, you know, there, you know, whether, you know, I don't know, like a, a cool moisture wicking, you know, little towel thing for the volunteers or some little like, you know, you know, unique gift there. Um, that's something that we can, you know, hand off to the, the volunteers as well. Oh, great question. Uh, Slinda asked about housing. So Catherine, so, I don't know if you'd like to touch on yeah. that. And we'll go oh, back to the Absolutely, great here. question. Um, we have lodging and accommodations on our website at visit BBR backslash Ironman. Um, we have an individual here locally who goes to our area hotels to, um, to get blocks of rooms set up with the rate um, that is conducive to the, the, the various um, businesses or various um, hotels in the area. Um, we, we sort of uh, kept um, our locations likely to be sort of from the base of the operations, which is where um, Ironman Village is in the first transition. So it kind of, uh, we find that uh, the athletes last year wanted everything from that core area just outside of the area. Um, and so it, it, it really fanned out from Spring Hill Suites to downtown to Roanoke County and then airport area. So it's a wide area that has been incorporated into the lodging. So take a look at our lodging piece. Um, and if you have any questions um, about that, please don't hesitate um, to let us know um, if there's something that, um, that catches your eye and you'd like to know more about. Thank you. Great question. Uh, let's see. Another question in the chat is how many volunteers and how many athletes should we expect? Yeah, so about 1500 volunteers um, is our is our goal um, and what would make the event operate completely smooth. Um, so I know we had about 1300 this year and with the increased number of athletes, or excuse me, 1300 last year with the increased number of um, athletes this year, we'll, we'll need a bit more volunteers. Um, we're expecting around 2400 athletes join us this year. And, and then just to add to that would be, you know, talking two to four people per athlete, honestly. So, you know, in total, it's, it's somewhere in the ballpark of seven to 10,000, not including, you know, just most, mostly local volunteers. Sorry, I'm gonna repost in the chat, the link to volunteer for that opportunity for us. Erica, do you want to mention the, um, the volunteer um, meetup? Um, anybody wants to sign up? 
Yes, thank you, Catherine. Um, we are hosting a volunteer recruitment night at Star Hill um, Brewery uh, on April 4th at 5 p.m. So um, if any of you are interested, you can come on out. Uh, Dr. Sarah Klemenchik um, and I, and as well as Brant, will be there. We can you know, go through all the volunteer opportunities, um, what's available, um, and just really uh, talk about how you can get involved uh, as well as sign up that night. Uh, one other quick question. If businesses are interested in being a part of the expo, should I direct them to you, Erica, or do you have, is there somebody more specific on your team that we should connect them with? So in that, in that deck, there is an email. Um, I believe it's expo at ironman.com. Um, and there's also a link to our website where, where you can yes. drop in the chat too, if you don't mind, um, that will show the different options as well as the contact information. Super. Slides back up here. There's the. Super, thank you, Brant. People are asking some great questions. Keep them coming. And feel free to post those in the chat or if you wanna unmute and ask, that is fine either way. There are no more oh, questions. Um, <laughs> sorry. Go ahead, Lindsay. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I will email the email the expo email account, but I just whoops, sorry, it muted that's me again. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll email the expo account if that's the best thing to do. But I was looking at the link just now, and I noticed that they are all like tents and tables and chair spots. We are Space Rabbit Coffee, a mobile coffee trailer that serves a full espresso-based coffee menu, smoothies, um, plant-based energy drinks, hot chocolates. Um, so I was trying to figure out if, if food truck type things are welcome to um, purchase spots as well, or if it's just strictly more like tent type vendors. Um, I'll, I'll probably, and Erica can correct me if I'm wrong. I'll probably have you connect with Erica just specifically on that piece. Okay. Um, the other piece that I did forget to mention, um, just as we were talking through like vendors and stuff, um, anybody that is just local in the region there, um, we do offer a, a local just vendor discount. Um, let, let us confirm on that, but let, I believe it's like 20% um, off just for being like a local vendor there in the region. So um that would also apply just if you were, you know, with us through the entire weekend or whatnot, but um, specifically on the food or the coffee truck there, um, probably connect you with Erica. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. All right, friends, I'm going to do a last call for questions, so whether you want to unmute or if you want to post those in the chat. Or if you think of something after the fact, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're happy to get you connected to the right folks that can help you and um, be a part of Ironman 2022. It's, what'd you say, Brian, it's 60 days out? Yeah, I, I don't have my official countdown up yet, but... Um... Come on, man. <laughs> Some quick math is 68, no, uh, yeah, about 68 maybe, maybe a little more. Be here before we know it. Exactly. But I know out where I live out in Botata and there's, I already see folks out training on the weekend. So they're here. So great opportunity to get them in your business and shop and eat and stay and play and all the do all the things in, in our region, so. All right, well, thank you all again. I'm gonna 
wind things down for us. And like I said, if you have any questions, whether you're watching, you know, with us here today or you're watching this later, don't hesitate to reach back out. We want this to be a meaningful experience for all that are involved here locally that live here and work here and own businesses here, but also those that are coming to join us. So thank you, a huge thank you to um, Erica and Brant and Catherine and Marley for collaborating with me again this year. Um, it's been such a great opportunity to be able to share knowledge and resources and you guys get some of the inside scoop early and ready to go and um, get ahead of the game. So we appreciate your time this morning and I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Thank, Thank you, you all. Together. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Heather.